So in this video, we're going to check out several PoE cameras, some 4K ones, which are 8 megapixel, as well as some 5 megapixels. So we've got a lot of examples of the cameras in different environments from color night vision to infrared night vision during the day, lots of shadows, etc. And we kind of go in depth and show what each camera is about hardware wise. And then as well, we will show the interface itself for setting the camera up on the web. And don't forget, you always have all of the markers down below so you can jump around to the parts that you want to see or maybe just jump to the conclusion. And if you do that, definitely give us a like, get, hit the subscribe button. Well, let's get to it. And as always, you can find the links down below for if you want to purchase the cameras or need help setting them up, etc. And we do appreciate if you do use those affiliate links. There's no extra cost to you. We appreciate it. Thanks. So in no particular order of the cameras, this is the first shot it is going to be in the backyard with one big shadow, which can be an issue for some cameras. So do pay attention of what you can see, what you cannot see, etc. The next frame is kind of midday, which there is some shadows from the tree behind in the yard. And some cameras you can't, like the Anki, you can hardly even see the dark colored dog in the bottom left hand corner. Now we did leave all of the color and lighting as default on every single camera, just so we just kind of gave everybody a fair shake. Now this is with the wide dynamic range, it says WDR, and it does try to give you a one camera that covers two areas of daylight and shadows. But of course, the WDR, if, you t if it's turned up too much or just the camera tries to open overcompensate, well, then it ends up blowing out some of the sunlight areas too. And then some cameras will just kind of give it a washed out look and totally just mess up the colors. Now, we did turn off the wide dynamic range for this shot. And you can tell each of them probably has some issues with trying to pull things out of those shadows, some more than others. Now, towards the end of the video, we will show different full-size video clips of this so you can get a better idea. Because we did try synchronizing all four videos, but just due to all the different lenses and frame rates and everything, it just becomes a, well, the video probably wouldn't have been out for another few weeks. Now this is a color night shot and this backyard is very dark. So do pay attention that sometimes more pixels is not better because now you have to feed those additional pixels more light. And if you don't have much light, well, it becomes difficult. Now we did turn off the IR on each camera and turn them on at one at a time. That way we would not see the IR from each different camera. Now I know some people always ask, Hey, can this thing read license plates? It's if you need to read license plates in a dark area with infrared, probably stick to a well zoom camera that is a LPR camera or they'll refer to them as ALPR for advanced license plate reader. Cause I'll show you exactly why we tested this on every single camera and had pretty much the same result. The IR just simply blows out the entire license plate due to the reflection and you will not be able to read it. It's in a little area that has more from street lighting with this individual that's just staring off into space. And we did turn off the IR on each of these cameras. Now this is more of my favorite shot. That just really won me over previously on the Amcrest 5 megapixel. This is the color night vision with the IR turned off in color mode. And again, you can tell that camera on the bottom right just didn't do so well. Now we took the video from earlier and we did a zoomed in shot. This would be kind of like if you're doing digital zoom. And this was around 3.5 to 4X digital zoom. And you can tell definitely during the day when you have enough light that more megapixels allows you to digital zoom and have better quality. So go ahead and feel free to run back and check out some of the, which ones you think are better in different areas and which ones are worse. And well, let's take a look at the camera themselves. Well, we're familiar with this little guy here. This is the RLC 520. And we did a previous review on this one. 
still we didn't really like that little mounting plate if you want to watch that one we'll link it down in the description below or possibly up here if we can but this one's going to make it into the list it is a five megapixel as well as it does do your power over ethernet or you can do your alternate 12 volt source and this is just your reset button and we have the amcrest five megapixel little turret mount here and you can see a little trend here i do like the turret mounts they're just usually easy to mount up of course we did the whole video on this one as well so we won't dwell on it on all the features and what we like disliked but this does have that starlight lens for low lighting situations sd card and just like others going to be in the list power over ethernet or alternate 12 volt source and audio on this one as well so let's check out what else we got next up we get the anki or anki however you want to say it this one looks a lot like the hick visions so it's probably just a type of rebrand if i've seen some of the other ankis the gui looks just like the hick vision cameras of course it does have a pretty big ir and it's like focused looks like in a type of square pattern and a decent lens and the mounting system is kind of weird on this one i have done an open box on this one but then i really got i would say upset with it but i just didn't really like the camera too much due to the mounting system yeah they do have a mounting screw on it unlike some other ones but it's a poor design i even said in the video man i could just see me dropping this thing in the grass and never finding that again yeah that's what i said and guess what happened when i put the damn thing up i lost the damn screw i dug in the grass for over an hour and finally found the damn screw and was able to get this thing going again and well you can see this changes things back up this is the bullet model of the amcrest 4k this is the black version i do prefer the black version it just looks awesome up on the house now one thing i did like about this even though it is a bullet is you do get that standard ball joint now it has a set screw whoa definitely game changer right if you unscrew this set screw here and loosen everything of course you can mount this however you want now if you're typically mounting it on an eave or something underneath you can only have this left and right don't let that confuse you you actually can twist this part so just take and twist as you can see it will pivot around and it has little clicks but then when you set this set screw, it tightens this ball joint and tightens this little slide for going left and right. Pretty cool design, locks it straight in. These things definitely won't go anywhere. Now, one thing you'll notice on the lens, it looks just like that five megapixel one. Well, it is a starlight lens again, so we'll definitely have to check out the low light. It does also have a shade that can slide over the camera itself a little bit. Now you'll notice there's no SD card and there's no microphone on this guy. So if you're looking for something audio and an SD card, this is probably not for you, but we'll see if it makes up for it. This camera did not make it into the full review of this one, and but I did want to give it kind of an honorable mention because of what it brings to the table now. This is the new 4K type of AI camera, and I will probably be doing a full review on it. But I want to show you one thing that they did listen to. You'll notice there's no flash login asking to load any type of flash. They've done away with doing the flash and hopefully they'll bring firmware upgrades to their other cameras to do the same. And this is the 4K camera. If you remember, 
Reolink's 4K camera did not have the web interface and did not have RTSP. Guess what? This one does. And we're not going to dwell on this one too much. This is the Reolink one that the RLC 520, we did show this previously and the interface has not changed much. This current firmware version, which we did mention, it does still require flash. They need to update that. Hint, hint, they did it on one. And pretty much the same typical stuff like we've shown in several videos, gonna refresh here, nothing wrong with the camera. You have your playback stuff, you have your advanced settings, you can change your exposure and everything. You won't find as many deep options on the real link cameras. They just don't have as many options, like say being able to turn down the brightness in the IR. It's just like, hey, IR is on or off. Some of that stuff in the wide dynamic range and the field of view is not as much on this model, but you just can't beat it at that price point. Now there is that Amcrest 5 megapixel that's knocking on its door, when, especially when it's on sale. And hmm, that leads us to the Anki. Uh, it looks like the exact Hikvision, except I guess it's a rebrand and I, didn't like some of the stuff in this GUI. First, it starts off in this weird low quality. And then if you change this, it doesn't really tell you what M is in this. And uh, it made it very difficult. And then sometimes it would hang up. So then if you change, like, it looks like the stream here. And it would just blast away on the CPU time just jumps through the roof when you do this on this one. And I can view some of the others in full quality like the Amcrest and the Rio Lynx and they don't have this issue. So I'm not sure what they're using for the browser, but Chrome does not like it. The white kind of drives me crazy. Now, one thing I could not figure out was how to turn off the dang AIR during the night. So we ended up having to put a piece of tape over it. I even went through all the configuration and tried to change things and it just would not work out for us for trying to turn off the IR at night with all the different adjustments. We, you would think you'd go down here and maybe we're missing a setting, but there was the day and night switch and it just, this smart supplement light, we'd try and turn it off and it still wouldn't work out for us. So it does have a lot of stuff in here. You do have an SD card setting if you want to do it in here, doing RTSP and OnVIF and everything. So it did pull straight in to Blue Iris and other apps without any issue. Now it does say video and audio, but I didn't find any audio. So I maybe I should check the specs and probably would have found the audio, but there's no audio on here that I could find. So pretty much a simple camera, no frills. There does have your typical stuff to go ahead and change and configure all the different exposure settings, etc. Now this is the Amcrest 8 megapixel and it does not require flash or anything else to pull into Chrome, so no specific plugins required. Now, in the setup, you can get pretty deep into some of these Amcrest cameras. And down, say, from the IR light, which we did talk about, where you can change the IR light intensity, you can crank it all the way up, and then you can put it all the way back down, where if you don't want IR, Pretty cool stuff. You can dig through and do the backlight mode. You can do the white balance. I mean, it's this can't the, the you get more since you're paying more. You did get to dig more into these different settings, as well as one of the big key features that I find for the Blue Iris users and maybe some of the other softwares. You can change the frame interval. Out of all these cameras, the only one you could not change the frame interval on the video settings was the real link cameras. They should also enable that feature. And what that allows you to do is check that little box in Blue Iris that says limit decoding. And that really helps out with the GPU and CPU decoding on the actual camera itself. 
And you do also get the substream in these cameras as well. And you can play with all the settings. That's more some more CPU, GPU savings and stuff and AI and whatnot in Blue Iris, which will be a whole video in itself when we get into that. And of course, we got to check the ports. You do have the uh, OnVIF that we do get from this camera. And it's just showing an authentication or not, which is default. And you do get RTSP as well as this interface. Now, this one does not have the spot for an SD card and does not have audio. But it has that starlight lens that we really like that is great for night vision. So, let's jump on over to the last Amcrest camera. So, you may be asking, well, but you just said this was an Amcrest camera. Well, it actually is, but we did flash the bin file. No, there's no soldering, no wires, no screwdrivers. You just simply take the bin file and upload it through your browser on the Dawa bin file, and it comes right in. You get some extra features. And if you have as much trouble as me pronouncing this name, this is a video link. It's not my video. But it's a video link down below that helps pronounce this. I'm probably going to mess it up in a little bit here. Feel free to roast me in the comments if you like. So this is that Amcrest 5 megapixel. We really like this camera. It's a great price point. It's in a turret. has audio. It has the SD card, etc. And just has a great picture, but maybe not as wide as a picture as some people may like. Some of the additional features you do get for doing the Dawa bin file, which is still going to be a struggle for me to say. You'll notice it does look a lot like the Amcrest we did just show, so we're not going to dig into there. They just may have some different words that are changed, such as the Illuminator. In almost sounds like that would be a movie. And, of course, you still get on your network when you go to the ports, you do get on VIF and you do get the RTSP. There's the motion detection and for the Home Assistant users, this will pop right in using the Amcrest Iowa integration. You've got several different things here. You have from audio detection. So you can add a rule in here, like there's a trip wire if you would like. You can see a device or object going from direction of say region A to B or B to A or it just goes from B to A or whatever. You can have it record that and do different things. It's pretty cool what you can do in here for doing the tripwire and you can also do the intrusion. This is the additional stuff that you do get with the Dawa firmware. And do take note from what I've read on the internet and of course not everything's true. But I have, and I have not tried it. You cannot go back to doing the stock Amcrest. But I haven't had any issues recording from this, and it just adds additional features. Other than that, that's the web interfaces for the camera. Sometimes pretty boring, but I do like to go through some of the web interfaces. It really shows all the features and getting the nitty gritty of the cameras themselves. So I know you're probably wondering, which one did you pick? Which one's your favorite? Well, that's kind of a loaded question based on because some cameras work better in some places with different shadows and lighting. And well, I do really like the Amcrest cameras just because of the simplicity of the GUIs and they use dark mode in the GUIs. And yeah, their application kind of sucks for the PC and the web on the phone, but I'm not using it there a whole lot. Didn't have any issues with frame rate, oddity, as I did for some reason with the Anki. Don't know why, but at night, even we tried recording several times, that when we would be walking across the yard, it would seem to be dropping frames. I'm not sure if the CPU in the camera itself was having issues trying to overcome the not having much light and wouldn't allow it to record at a higher frame rate in 4k so if i really had to pick i do like having audio Dad, they hear me. and i like having that starlight lens and that price point of that 
Amcrest 5 megapixel, plus you can upload the Dawa firmware and add all those features. I mean, that's just, you just can't beat it. The only thing that they had would improve on that mount a little more. And that's one of the issues I also had with the Anki. The mount on that sucked with that screw and everything. It really just pissed me off with that. They just should have put a regular screw on it. But the Anki did have some good pictures at some point, but it did blow out in others. So it really just depends again where you're wanting to use it. And there just really wasn't like this one that was just, wow, this one's so much better and this one really sucks. It was just... They were kind of in between. So do your shopping. And I know we're not going to mention prices in here because prices are just so volatile with cameras. And by the time we would mention the prices, it's just going to be over and someone's going to change them in sales and etc. So just check the links down below and just do your own shopping. So I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. Helps bring new projects and new videos to the channel all the time. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to be a subscriber and check us out. We're going to try to do some additional live streams and different projects and things. So don't miss out on those. And y'all take care. And well, let's roll the other videos for the clips of the cameras.